Let's say it's a. There you go. Okay. Wonderful. All right. So yes. please, Dr. <laughs> Morris is. Dr. Dr. Is Morris is. <laughs> yes, we are married, actually. Yes. Oh, wonderful. In, in, in Dubai. Yes. We're in Dubai since uh, one year ago. We arrived one year ago. And uh, before we were in France. Yes, she's an um, aesthetic doctor in uh, mm -hmm. in Dubai now, and I'm a plastic surgeon. And we were uh, working in France uh, one year before, and we moved to Dubai for a new experience, new challenge in our life. Mm -hmm. And there is, a, and mm -hmm. there is a lot of challenge in Dubai. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I'm I'm aware. <laughs> Have you been in Dubai uh, to work before? Yes, I think uh, you you I've did. I've yeah. there a, a few times and. Uh, it's very unique in the way they yeah. run medicine there and uh, they've set up a lot of potential for plastic surgery and clinics and things like that but unfortunately a lot of bad clinics were set up and uh, didn't mm. right and they've set a standard for how the clinics are run which is uh, yes. not so great for the, the fundament the fundamentals are not here there's like everything secondary but the principles is not built like it should be so yeah that's okay you have husband and wife who can change that now <laughs> or not <laughs> yeah and about the sculpture so uh, we wanted to talk with you about this subject because here in dubai uh, they love the trends as you can imagine all the trends uh, the people want to try it Mm. And nowadays, the sculpture is like the non-facelift, the non-surgical facelift options. Mm. So this is the trend now. Yeah. And a um, lot of uh, girls, a lot of women are trying to, to do the sculpture to avoid the facelift. So that's uh, actually what we are fighting now. And young, at a young age now, before like it was proposed to women at their 45, 50 years old, now they are, we are proposing it to 30 years old, 25 years old so at some point you have to say stop well, so why is that happening is because somebody made up a lie they made up a story mm, yeah. and then everybody believed it so they kept perpetuating this lie um, and the lie was based upon somebody very uneducated misinterpreting a research article and they mm -hmm. didn't know how to read it they didn't understand it and it's like a little child reading it. And they just took that information. They said it publicly. And then they started to repeat it. And the lie that they created, which is... It's, they started believing in it. They started actually believing in it. And that it is that uh, Sculptra makes the skin healthier. Uh, mm. Sculptra makes the dermis restore its collagen, which is it's complete nonsense. And yeah. Uh, Anybody who disagrees with that is completely uneducated. They just don't understand. And it's a fact. It's not a matter of opinion. People say, oh, well, yeah. surgeons say this. Dermatologists say something else. No, it's it's a matter of fact. It's not opinion. Uh, it, is a, it is physically impossible for Sculptra, which is an irritant. It's a polyelastic mm -hmm. acid. It's yeah, an irritant. Yeah, it's all about an inflammation yes. chain reaction. It's completely impossible for it to restore uh skin quality or to make skin healthier it's impossible it cannot happen mm. it's impossible and not even one human being in the world can that happen so the confusion is from people repeating it but uh, the confusion is added to because when you add sculpture under the skin some people's skin does look better and it looks better in some people not because it's healthier though not because it's healthier no. it's because it added volume under the skin and the skin is pushed up and it gets denser. So if you touch the skin, it's more firm. It's not healthier. Healthier would be soft. It wouldn't be firm. Um, yeah. Skin looks better. So the uneducated people who don't understand it fully get confused by this. And they think that that positive change that they saw in one aspect means that all aspects of the skin got healthier. Yeah, fact, of course. It's not at all true. So uh, it's very, very harmful that people are doing it at such a pace. And um, when we talk about it like this, 
everybody thinks it's black or white. They say, oh, you're against sculpture. You must hate sculpture. Exactly. Mm -hmm. oh, you're, you're a Nazi against sculpture. You hate sculpture. And I said, no, you, you idiot. I'm just telling you that the way you're interpreting it is wrong. Mm -hmm. You need to learn what it does to use it properly. They don't understand that. So their mindset yeah. is very, very narrow. Narrow. Yeah. yeah. And here in Dubai, actually, patients are uneducated because they believe uh, that doctors who have knowledge, but, but doctors are mis, um, doing it and they are not doing correctly their jobs because they are being dishonest with the patients only to like to be to consume the medicine here it's about consuming the medicine actually more than practicing the medicine and this is what shocked us because we come from france as well france is like very taboo it's a very um restricted restricted there's lots of uh regulation mm. and uh a lot of patients doing sculpture here, they have the results like for maybe six or eight months because of all the inflammation, which brings the volume with the water on the face. And after that, the result will fade away. Mm. But what I can see during uh, the procedure, like for example, the deep plane facelift that uh, you, you're practicing a lot, uh, we can see different things under the skin when we're performing the dissection, like there is white spots and sometimes fibrosis, scar tissue, and everything is more difficult to dissect. So I wanted to know your opinion about this. D did you face these problems uh, as well? Yeah, of course. It's not a major issue for facelifting. It's more of a nuisance. So it makes it a little slightly more challenging, but uh, you know, not a terrible thing. And I think the, the the conversation about sculpture, you can start it with, so we start it with what is it actually good for? What is it actually doing? Uh, because I think when you talk to people about it and you just say, no, it's bad for this reason, they think you're saying it's bad for all reasons. So uh, the conversation is to say, okay, here's what it's good for. And then I'll get to kind of the, the, the facelifting yeah. at hand and how you translate um, does having fibrotic tissue, does having that scar tissue have any negative effect or does it not? You know, that's another question mm -hmm. because you can translate it to say that it looks scarred inside, it's scarred outside is not correct, right? So first off to say like, does it have any benefit? Um, sculpture does have benefit and the benefit to it is the initial indication that it came out for many, many years ago. Yeah. Which was in 2004, it got the FDA approved for okay. HIV patients. Exactly, for lipodystrophy. Yeah. And it was a very smart approval because mm. they're approving sculpture, which is poly-L lactic acid. It's a suture material. It's an irritant. And they approved it for lipodystrophy because it can add volume to the face. And mm. that is what it does, period. That is period. what it does. There is nothing else that it does, but irritate and cause volume formation via granulomatosis. So it causes mm. fibroplasia, meaning fibroblasts come in and they start depositing collagen among yes. soft other portions of soft tissue. But which collagen? Uh, it's a mix of collagen. Uh, yeah. but like on their, on their marketing, they say it increased 66% the type 1 collagen. Like it's on the first page of their internet site. Yeah. But is this really the collagen that we want in our uh, dermis? It's it's nice to have some type 1 collagen. The problem is the organization of the collagen. Like to say, uh, I'm going to build you a mansion and make the most beautiful house for you with all this type 1 collagen in that structure versus I'm going to get a bunch of pieces of wood and throw it at your face and let it just dump in a pile on the ground is not a house. So that's mm. what's happening is the organization of the collagen is not the same of a built structured mansion, which is your dermis versus all this granulation tissue, which is a bunch of piles of wood that are thrown down mm. on top of each other and don't have shit structure. So the collagen, not just the type, but the organization and the array is completely different and it's disorganized. And a disarray of collagen is not what you see in natural healthy skin. In natural healthy skin, you see very organized collagen, very organized waves of collagen that 
lead to the tissue having proper elasticity, uh, rigidity, tension, and all the kind of stuff that you see in a healthy dermis. But what you're noticing, mm. is it's not in the dermis even. It's not even in the same plane. It's down in the deeper tissues where you're depositing it. And in the whole surrounding area, you get deposition of all types of collagen. There's 29 yeah. types of collagen. And within, you know, in this world, everyone thinks there's five. There's 29 types, yes. maybe even more. And there's uh, hundreds of ways that it can be organized. So when you look at the kind of variability in this, there's thousands of ways the collagen can be organized. Mm -hmm. And how would you ever say that they're all good? It's impossible. So the type of collagen is different, but the question is, it makes no sense anyways. The question of, is it putting type one collagen back in your skin? No, the answer is no, it does not do that. And no study has ever shown that within the dermis itself, does it restore uh, organized or replaces the collagen that was lost? It's deposition of scar tissue at the base of the reticular dermis that they're seeing in those studies. And people don't know how to read histology. They can't read histologic staining agents, yeah. which show the fibrils that are disorganized at the base of the dermis and cause a little inflammation in the reticular dermis. What they're seeing is in their mind, collagen deposition within the dermis, but it's below the dermis. So uh, either mm -hmm. way, the benefit remains the same as the day one. Nothing's changed. Nobody's invented anything new, right? Yeah. yeah. No, nobody's invented a new way to use Sculptra. Like, oh my God, I can mm -hmm. it more superficially. They're just being more stupid about it. Because in the past, they yeah. knew when they started using it, that it forms granulation tissue. And for that to be effective and safe, we're going to deposit it into deeper layers. So it forms tissue bulk, which is what it does. And that's the FDA indication. And it was an accurate usage of the medication. Yeah. Yeah. Someone thought they invented something new by discovering, oh my God, you can inject this under the skin and somehow cause the skin to rejuvenate. And they extrapolate incorrectly that skin looking fuller, looking better means it's healthier. That's not true. Mm. You can cause damage and have it look fuller and have it look smoother, just like you see from fillers. You can put fillers in, under the skin and you have wrinkles, the wrinkles yeah. go away. But is that the way you want wrinkles to go away by stretching it out with water? No, it's, no. it's not. like, so the same thing goes with, with the sculpture. So it does have its use. It's a very good medication when you use it properly. But do never assume anything has changed from day one. Nothing's changed about the medicine. Nothing's changed about the usage of it. Nothing's changed about what it does ever. So mm. these other uses are now overly creative and not based scientifically on anything except for mm. misinterpretation and misreading of articles, scientific articles. And what people are doing, it's insane. They're using it to try to stimulate dermal collagen synthesis. Yeah, like, no, the faces are overfilled like in Dubai and they created this looks actually and now they are selling Sculptra as the natural filler like your own so you don't look don't overfilled yeah first of all you cre created this the puffiness yeah there's too much puffiness here <laughs> yeah Juvederm lands of yeah course. and so the problem with Sculptra uh, would be if you if you assume other things that aren't true, you're going to start getting inaccurate, un, not reproducible results. They become erratic results. And this is what's happening. So you inject it mm. into the area, you treat it like a filler. It's not a filler. It's a, mm. gran it's a, it's a granulator. So it starts to form bulk yeah. volume. But you don't know if it's going to form 1 cc or 3 cc, 4 cc. Yeah, so you exactly. Have to, you have to know what it does and respect it and go slow with it. What you don't want to do is decrease your predictability with another thing people do. They mix it with hyaluronic acid. So they get yeah. hyaluronic acid gel and they coat those microspheres of PLLA, which are already microspheres and uh, has a carrier molecule. And they put another carrier on top of it, mm -hmm. absorbing it. Now your body may or may not react to it. It may do it now. It may do it a year later. So you don't have any idea how your body is going to react to the sculpture anymore because you've buried some of the particles. Your body doesn't know they're there and you've added mm. volume, and you don't know if the HA volume is going to stay or not, then you don't also know, is your body going to start reacting to that yeah. and start eating but it You're up? controlling nothing. You're controlling nothing. So all you're doing is adding more and more variables. You have no mm. idea what's going to happen to it. Nobody in the world can say with accuracy that they know what, what's going to happen to yeah. sculpture by itself with volume, let alone if you add on a gel. So it's better mm. to respect it, do it carefully, do it cautiously. It's a beautiful medication to use when you use it properly. But everybody believes these lies about collagen and making it younger and their imagination is much- Because the marketing is so 
good actually their marketing is really good yeah and yeah. as well as well they're saying that we change like the the concentration of the product like it's less concentrated than the first time for hiv so that's that's okay. the the yeah. first but the biochemical mechanism yeah. is the same it, well they don't understand it's particles it's a powder so they exactly. the concentration doesn't matter because the carrier molecules no. of water get reabsorbed so the only difference with the concentration is that it's a little more dispersed. You're less likely to form concrete nodules within one area. That's mm. the only difference. Uh, otherwise, the volumization, uh, there's no known difference for it. Now, what happens in these phases is they become more dense. They get more volumized, which I've used Sculptra. So I'm good with it and using it in like a deep buckle, buckle space or places like that. It's fine. Um, however, it does cause the scar tissue formation. Then you have to ask yourself, is there something negative about this that is going to cause a problem that you can't fix? And the answer is yes. If you inject it too superficially, you're making what we call soft tissues, right? In every language, there's a version of soft tissues because it's soft and you turn yeah. them firm. I don't mm -hmm. know anybody in this world who wants to have a firm soft tissue, rock hard. Yeah. And yeah. that's what it does is it increases tissue rigidity slightly. And the tissue rigidity mm. may look good because your skin looks a little shinier, but it doesn't feel good. It doesn't function well. So it's not a good idea mm. to put this directly under the skin where people are trying to put it because you're going to cause increased tissue rigidity, which is not a good thing for the soft tissues. Everybody keeps thinking there's only dermis. What about the subdermal fascia? The mm. subdermal fascia, which is three to four millimeters on most of the face, is the major support mechanism for all your skin. And it's yeah. soft and it's a hydrator and it's yellow. And you go put this stuff in. And it's going to change the color a little bit to a little whiter. It's going to go. Exactly. It's going to cause less water absorption over time. It causes all these issues. If you put it under thin skin, it's going to cause nodules. If you put it in the under eye, permanently can cause nodules. So um, all we have to do somehow is correct people and teach them that nothing's changed. It works how it used to work. All this other stuff you're hearing, even though surgeons and der dermatologists keep repeating, it doesn't mean it's true. And they don't believe that. There's like, there's no way. There has to be some kind of American Medical Associ Association, European Medical Association that approved this message. There is not. People made it up and they kept following the lie over and over yeah. again. Yes. And it's hard for people to believe because so many people say it. And then I remind them. I say, look how stupid people look in this world. Look how stupid they look. Look how they walk around looking fake, weird, like monsters. Mm. Yes. And doctors are doing that to them. And doctors are doing that. To yeah, them. this is what makes it not even sad. from sculpture, from anything. So those yeah, same yeah. doctors are the ones who are don't see, don't know any better. And so they're the ones repeating yeah. it. No intelligent doctor who knows science, knows the face, has ever seen within inside the face would say that because they've seen mm -hmm. it. The only people who say it are the ones who don't know what inside looks like. So everything's a mystery yeah. and everything comes. Yeah creativity and dreams so you've never seen it you can only imagine what it's like so they start to imagine all this dermal collagen synthesis <laughs> it's all imaginative and they reinforce and think that their dream is true because in one article they saw that collagen got deposited under the dermis so that's what happens they take reality yeah. they misinterpret it to reinforce their mm. dream that's how it goes exactly and on the long term, like because here they they saying that the new protocol is to use the Sculptra, for example, every year, like a booster, yeah. you know, skin booster. booster. You do it every year. But yeah. the question is, imagine you're doing that for five years. What's gonna happen? We don't know. You're fucked. You you it's it's constantly gonna cause your skin to get thicker if it's under the skin itself. You're gonna cause scar tissue formation, which I don't know what negative effect it's gonna have, but I know it's gonna have negative effects. And if you keep putting mm -hmm. it deep, you're just going to build a big bulky face that you can't debulk. Uh, so yeah. we need to get away from people believing that it's a uh, rejuvenative stimulator. It does not do that. It's never been proven or shown to do that ever in any study in the history of the world. Mm -hmm. They're reading it wrong, but they don't get that they're reading it wrong. And what they the, do- is It's they creating an inflammation actually. And when you repeat the inflammation several times, like at the end, your body can get out of control because like it's only um, a sculpture is um, is what actually it's a foreign body that when you put it, there's macrophage that will come to this uh, foreign body 
with the fibroblasts and they will create an inflammation because oh. study, there are studies that show uh, only sculpture with fibroblasts, we don't have anything, like there's no response. But when we put fibroblasts with macrophage, the inflammation uh, uh, cells, we have a reaction. So it's about it's all about inflammation after all. So creating this on repeat at some point, like of course we will have scar tissue, we'll have uh, our body will react in a certain way that is not uh, what we want. So and then what do you so, do? Yeah, it's so misleading. Okay. I feel that patients are victims here. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh... They they themselves state it as fact. They say, "Oh, I'm doing sculpture to to boost my skin." They keep saying that, yeah. like as if it's natural to do sculpture. Like I'm more natural, so I'm doing sculpture, not fillers. But no, it's not this at all. There's nothing natural about it. Um, doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. Just use it properly. And there's nothing mm. natural about anything that we do. Nothing that we do necessarily is natural. Other than maybe like, you know, putting in some PRP is as natural as you can, you can really get. Um, but putting in a foreign mm. body is certainly not natural. So uh, mm. I wouldn't say that it isn't. Uh, you see this in all the little issues that people have and the issues when they get them, they're very difficult to fix. So you get massive hypertrophy sometimes that you have too much volume on the face. Very hard to fix. Under eye edema, which can be permanent, very hard to almost impossible to fix. Nodules under mm. the skin very hard to almost impossible to fix. Uh, what do people do to try to fix these things? They try to liposuction the face. They try to do radio frequency to the face. And when they liposuction, it's possible that they remove the sculpture granules, or it's possible, more likely, that they remove the healthy fat that was around it. So the softer tissue, they end up removing and they get more tissue rigidity with worse hydration. Um, it's going to be worse yeah you end up replacing one problem with another exactly and the granules people try to break them apart so your body can eat them up which does work sometimes you get saline or you get hypertonic saline or you can get sodium thiosulfate yeah. or whatever you want and you can needle them to try to break them up or you can ultimately excise but not there's no control no uh no which is why when you use it you want to use it deep in an area where it's surrounded by fat already and you're just enhancing the fat volume mm. and that's that's how it's properly used that's how it's predicted yeah this is for lipoatrophy what you yeah. are using and you, it, so. and you give it several months for it to work because it does take several months for it to reach its final volume and then you can add on at that point and that's how we used to use sculpture and the problems were pretty minimal um mm. right now they're using it getting lots of problems yet very you know little to no improvements and if they do get improvements Maybe it's not the right kind. Again, you get like tissue rigidity and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, the message is being propagated because popularity goes up and most doctors, mm -hmm. they judge their success by how much people come to them for something. So they think that yeah, yeah. people keep coming and asking for something that it means it's yeah. good. Okay. Mm -hmm. and that's, they're, they're very simplistic. You know, the doctors, they're, they're kind of smart. They're not that smart. And they think that if somebody keeps coming back and asking for something, that translates immediately to causation. Of, this is auto-validation. Exactly, exactly. And they think because mm -hmm. they come back, it's good. Not realizing that they're looking more and more like, you know, animals and weirdos and aliens every single time they, they come back. And, and that's it. Like the sculpture now, they use it, what I call this, like the monster cocktail. They use the sculpture. They add a lot of fillers because they're afraid from surgery, so they add volume and volume to avoid mm -hmm. the facelift. And the final touch is to use the thread. Yeah. So this way, you have really the monster cocktail ready, ready to explode. Which, which threads mm -hmm. also form collagen. So this is yeah. the fun part, but it's a polydioxanone thread, which uh, is much more indolent and less reactive. So thankfully, the threads are less inflammatory than the sculpture. They don't cause as much inflammation. Uh, but it is the same exact kind of misinterpretation and uh, poor correlation of data is that they say that they can put threads under the skin and it makes uh, it makes it better. Collagen. And, yeah, it makes collagen. And people not understanding. They say collagen like they understand what collagen is. They have no idea what collagen yeah. is. They have no idea. They tell me. <laughs> 
they tell me you should put it in the lip to form collagen in the lip. And I'm like, what wow. the oh. what? I'm in lips every single day. I'm like, what collagen are you talking about? What does yeah. this look like that you're talking about? Because I've been there yeah. forever and it doesn't exist. I see. Congrats, by the way, on Cupid lips. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but, Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. But when people say collagen formation in the lip, I'm confused because I'm in the lip every single day. Uh, every single day. I'm in mm. the I've never seen it. I don't know what they're talking about. Where's the collagen that they're talking about? I So it's imagination. It's pure imagination. It's, it's a magic, magic world. Collagen. They said collagen. collagen it's the Stem magic cell. world. Stem cell, collagen, yeah. telomere. <laughs> they, you know, they, oh, my God. Yeah, like, there's a lot of... Um, bs actually in our field and i feel like doctors we didn't do all these studies to be to to say bs first of all and to be like sellers like we are not sellers we are science scientists first of all so we have to be honest and explain things to people because they believe us so if they believe us you have to be honest with them and here especially in dubai really like honest doctors are a few <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's a business world with a lot of uh, commission um, set up in the... But in the US, it's not the same. Uh, uh... There is there is a huge competition in, in US as well. So maybe uh, you face this. Not as bad. Not as bad as uh, Dubai. D Dubai is way too financially incentivized. Uh, mm. and, you know, that's why people go to Dubai to do surgery, but it's way too financially incentivized. Uh, which makes it a little uh, skewed, I'd say. You know, you worry about uh, everybody who works for you trying to push you to do surgeries and procedures because the structure there is most clinics are incentivizing the uh, people who yeah. them. It's kind of like you go to Mercedes and no longer is it the salesman that's trying to sell you anything. Do you know this? When you go to Mercedes, the salesmen are actually not the top people anymore. The top people yeah. work in the service department. So they have service department where yes. you go in to get your car fixed. And that that person is the one who makes the most commission. So it's structured mm -hmm. in a weird way. And this is what's happening on the back end of these clinics is that it's not the doctor incentivized to do anything, mm -hmm. but the people who are selling the procedures as a consultant. And so yeah. Just yeah, the service exactly. people, they, end up, uh, they don't have as much ethical background and they end up selling it. So even if the doctor is a good doctor, and an ethical doctor. Yeah, there's the there's people, very good doctors in yeah, Dubai as well. Background there are are pushing yeah. it very hard, and Dubai is a great place to practice, great place to be. Unfortunately, you have surround you know you're surrounded by by those people uh, a little <laughs> bit. Yes. All right. I Thank you very much for. Um, we have a. Uh, oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, go go ahead. Not tell tell us. Oh, no, no, no. I, I was going to say the, the Zoom, I didn't put it on the right kind. So we just have a few minutes left on there. But but go ahead. <laughs> oh, okay. No, we, we are very honored like to discuss science with you because uh, uh, like... Yeah, you, you are one of the best doctor in the world and uh, you push every time to learn more and to educate more people about mm -hmm. the surgery, about the procedures and the... Uh, the science store. It's an honor to be with you today, to talk with you. And um, we hope meeting you someday to come uh, to learn from you. Well, you're always welcome to come to, to Los Angeles. We have fun, fun visitors every day. It's been a while since we've had anyone from Dubai. So it's, it's <laughs> got to come over in Paris. It's actually been a long time since that, too. <laughs> okay. Perfect. So we keep in touch. <laughs> Very good. All right, Dr. and Dr. Morris. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Time. It was a pleasure. And I'll share this video so you can share it with everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Yeah.